In today's video, we're going to be diving into the weather happening around the world. There is a lot of activity in the tropics, mostly in the eastern Pacific, although we still are going to be just tracking the Atlantic as we do expect eventually to see activity come out of there. Obviously, August is typically the first month where at some point it is expected for activity to kind of pick up, whether that is early, mid or late August. It typically happens during this month. So we're going to be just watching that every single day. We do have that cool down that is basically, it's not even just knocking on the door, it's basically already walked through, especially in the further north areas. So I hope you enjoy the much cooler, much more early fall-like weather that is here. There is reason to suspect that that could stick around for a while, and that's going to be a big topic for today's video, alongside some of the storminess just happening around the nation, especially the southeast, where it looks to be pretty repetitive. So let's go ahead and zoom in into the eastern Pacific real quickly. We do have our Tropical Storm Gill that is expected to reach Category 1 hurricane status before kind of dissipating and moving further northward. We do have this area just to the east of it where there's a 30% chance of development over the next two days and an 80% chance of development over the next seven. So definitely a high, high chance of overall development there. We do see to the east of that one, we have a new 0% chance of development over the next two days, but a 30 over the next seven. And as you guys know from watching these videos, probably these usually start out as this low overall chance and then either dissipate or climb from that point. So just because it says 30% chance does not mean that it's like pretty much supposed to not develop. Uh, it's more so we're just kind of waiting to see and it's probably a little bit longer out. So we're going to be watching that one closely. And I mean, when we look at the simulated radar Moving forward over the next couple of weeks, we can see a lot of spin-up systems just playing out. So we get that one, and that's the already developed one. The second one in the red area, third one in the yellow area, and then we actually get a fourth one that comes off of Central America towards the end. And that's even further out. We don't have any risk areas for that one. So lots and lots of activity. Looking at the Atlantic, we do get this kind of homegrown uh, threat nearby the southeast coast here at some point on this model run, uh, where we kind of see this one want to spin up and it comes very close to the East Coast, but it generally moves offshore. We're gonna be watching for risks like that alongside the one that we see pretty much cross the entire Atlantic and move into the Gulf uh, eventually. We could see that kind of coming off of Africa there, moving through and then over Cuba and Dominican Republic there. So there is a couple of threats out there in the Atlantic. I do want to go ahead and zoom in. This is that offshore threat this is by the sixth so we're looking five days from now and as i just kind of creep it forward we do see some overall storminess building for let's let's call it the outer banks of north carolina some of southeastern virginia where i live by the eighth seventh eighth time frame and then that one looks like a pretty developed system that moves generally offshore that is likely i think going to bring at least a very very slim chance of development along the East Coast here over the coming days, but time will tell, of course. Let's go ahead and move over to Weather Bell, where we'll take a look at the European model, look at the storminess for the entire United States, and then uh, those temperatures. Here we are taking a look at the overall storminess, and as you can see, there's already a lot of it around for the deep south and southeast for the day today. We can clearly see this ridge trough pattern that we're under so again the fall temperatures have arrived they are going to worsen a little bit over the next couple of days so it isn't the coldest day by any means today i think tomorrow is the peak for a lot of the northern areas and then for uh, the day on perhaps sunday i think we're looking at maybe the peak for areas further towards the south of course we'll dive into the temperatures later on let's just take this towards tomorrow on saturday where we see again the deep south and southeast seeing rich amounts of activity as this trough and overall cold front continues to sweep southward into the more warm and humid areas, it gets more hostile and we overall see more implications because of that. And that is in, coming in the form of overall thunderstorm development. We do see showers and thunderstorms along the Rockies as well for tomorrow on Saturday. It's worth noting. Sunday on the 3rd, again, Rockies, Plains seeing their fair share of activity, but the deeper south and southeast still seeing chances of thunderstorms persisting into August 3rd. Let's take this a step further towards Monday on the 4th, and it's a little bit more coastal, but you still see the deep south and southeast dealing with these thunderstorms. Now some of the northern plains and upper Midwest seeing some thunderstorms as well. 
I want to take us a step even further towards Tuesday on the 5th here, and we still see the deep south and southeast seeing activity, so that's going to be a nearly daily occurrence. We do see, again, northern Rockies, northern plains, up Midwest, seeing continued thunderstorm activity there for Tuesday to the 5th. Wednesday the 6th here, you guessed it, the deep south and southeast still seeing rich amounts of moisture, overall thunderstorm activity still lasting. We do see the Midwest and Plains seeing some activity as well. And this is really where we're watching for some potential offshore threats, whether that's in the Gulf here where there's definitely enough moisture or we're off the southeast where there's definitely enough moisture. We could see something kind of spin up out of any of this. That's what the GFS model was showing a minute ago. As we keep going towards Thursday the 7th, a lot of the same. Friday the 8th, really not changed too much. Saturday the 9th, we start to see this area that looks a little concerning north of the Bahamas and east of Florida. Definitely an area to watch in the southeast, still seeing activity. Same story with the northern plains and upper Midwest. We take this towards Sunday the 10th, and again, the southeast, the 11th on Monday. We're getting another cold front that's starting to roll through. We get this low up here over the Hudson Bay, dragging cold front, definitely bringing some more intense thunderstorms with it for these areas across the Midwest, Ohio Valley by this point, and probably heading eastward from there. By Tuesday, we see the Ohio Valley, deep south, more mid-Atlantic getting involved. Uh, and then by Wednesday the 13th, same thing, these similar areas seeing a lot of activity here. We still see the deep southeast dealing with a lot, though, as well. Even more concerning looks coming out of Florida, Bahamas, Cuba, kind of everywhere in between as well. Really, really intense thunderstorms there that, again, could become tropical activity. By Thursday, it looks to do that. I know it's very different than what the GFS model showed, but we see this area start to form here over the Bahamas, move over Florida, and then more towards the Florida panhandle. On this model run, it doesn't look like anything crazy, but definitely would be a heavy rainmaker, perhaps some wind as well. But pretty much would have all the potential in the world to develop that strike somewhere between Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle there. As again, a not so strong storm, but this is 342 hours out. And if the models are showing any potential for tropical activity, there's reason to believe that it could be, you know, just a area of thunderstorms up to a tropical depression, tropical storm, or even a hurricane. There's really no telling uh, what this would do, especially this far out. Uh, there's also no telling if it would happen at all. So there's, on the other hand, you know, it might be inaccurate at this point with any tropical activity, but we usually just look for signs of the models hinting at tropical activity, and we're definitely getting that here. Total precipitation, no surprises, really. We do see a lot of total precipitation for the southeast up into some of the southern mid-Atlantic, highly above average. And there is still a lot of activity up here in the Midwest, as well as the northern plains. So when we look at the anomalies... We do get this pocket of above average activity there in the Northern Plains and also well above average, maybe two times your average across the Southeast here, states like Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, and up into Virginia, all dealing with well above average precipitation. We can see that a lot of the Northeast, Great Lakes, and lower Midwest do deal with below average precipitation here though. I will say this isn't very far below average, which is a good thing because it's just going to be a little quieter than what's typical with some rainfall. Uh, so it's not really concerning, just lower amounts of overall activity. Here's the past three days of temperatures, and we can really see that cool down has moved in for a lot of these areas across the plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, as well as the Northeast here. The Southeast has held on to some of the warmth, but once we're looking back at this two days from now, these areas will be blue as well. So more on the way. Speaking of that, let's just kind of roll through the temperature uh, models here. And this is for today. We see a lot of those greens and darker blues popping up. That's 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Definitely significant for this time of year. Considering especially we were like 10 degrees above normal. We've seen a 20, 25 degree swing uh, downward from what we were at. So this is definitely a huge Huge cooldown for this time of year. Here's Saturday the 2nd, and again, like I mentioned, it starts to creep further south. Sunday the 3rd there, we see a lot of the southeast dealing with maybe even 15 to 25 degrees below normal. Really, really intense there. As we keep going, it sticks around for days. This is by the 6th, 7th, 8th. We can see that a lot of the inland areas start to warm first. So those areas start to cream, uh, kind of creep above average. But we do see 
for the southeast up through southern New England and everywhere in between. This model is still showing cooler than normal conditions by August 8th. As we keep going, that could last all the way through the 10th and maybe a little bit beyond. And that's when the model gets kind of averaged out. But I mean, the low temperatures, this model is still calling for the coolest spot in the United States to be, well, compared to normal, of course, but the most below normal area to be the southeast and deep south. So we'll have to see if that could hold on throughout a lot of August. I know a lot of you down there would love some relief from the heat. It's still hot, but just not as brutal. Definitely would be good news overall, I think. Now, with all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.